starts with breaking news. We begin with two breaking news stories. A brush fire threatening homes just to our north in Beverly Hills. And an underground explosion prompts a rescue mission to get people out who are trapped underneath a gas station in Pennsylvania. Good afternoon, I'm Kimberly Hunt and we start with 10 News anchor Brian Schlonsky. He's in the Live Center now with his fast moving fire in LA, Brian. Well, Kimberly, this fire is threatening homes. That's the big thing here and evacuations were just issued right now. We are watching the feeds from two different live channels. We've got this one down here showing an overview here and you can see how close to homes. And then as we pan up here, we've got multiple helicopters here doing water drops and there again, how close it is to some of those mansions in Beverly Hills. This is the Benedict Canyon neighborhood. It's actually above Beverly Hills. The fire being called the Portola fire. It broke out around two in the afternoon and it's threatening homes in at least three different neighborhoods. More than 250 firefighters are battling the blaze. Right now it's only scorched according to LA County Fire about 20 acres but as we wait for them to give an update we do expect that number to rise. Already have seen some estimates it might be burning closer to 50 or 60 acres. Mandatory evacuations we ish, uh, we mentioned have just been issued on a road called San Ysidro Drive which is right in that uh, Benedict Canyon neighborhood there. No injuries have been reported yet. That's the good news, but something interesting here. We told you about this on our uh, Facebook Live a couple of minutes ago. If you joined us there on uh, uh, the 10 News Facebook page, actress Barbara Eden of I Dream of Jeannie says that she lives nearby. She thought that all the smoke was coming from a barbecue, but of course it wasn't coming from this fire, although we don't know how it started yet. It's about 80 degrees in that in this area. Uh, we'll check in with uh, Melissa Masia here in a bit to talk more about the winds. But right now, firefighters saying they haven't had to battle too much of that. Uh, but this is something, of course, we're going to keep our eyes on. An evacuation center, uh, last of note, if you've got family or friends who live in this area near Beverly Hills, set up at the Westwood Recreation Center for those folks who live on San Ysidro Drive. Kimberly. Yeah, it's all about the terrain in Benedict Canyon. It's going to be it's going to be air power. It, as much as they can yep. get those helos in there and those fixed wing aircraft. There's another one right that, down that here. Every time we turn cannons. around almost. That's absolutely the only way in because uh, ground crews just can't get in to those steep canyons, those huge homes built along those canyons. Uh, and so many of their obviously multi-million dollar homes. We know you're on top of that. That one will go quickly and uh, will change quickly. So we'll check back in with you. There's also more breaking news. Dozens of crews are trying to get to at least one person trapped underneath the ground in Pennsylvania. Fire officials saying that it started after some type of underground explosion near a gas station. We're told at least one person has been rescued already. We are working to find out more on this. We will bring you new details just as soon as they come into the newsroom. And a window washer has died after falling from an eight story building in downtown San Diego. Sky 10 was overhead after it happened on J Street in the East Village across from the downtown library. 10 News reporter Travis Rice is live there right now. And Travis, this is really sad. How did it happen? Well, that's what officials are still trying to figure out because not too many people were around here when it happened this morning. Uh, officials also add that a quick glance at the window washer's gear does not immediately indicate equipment failure. Now, police say at a, just before 9 a.m. they got a call of a person falling from a building. When they arrived, they said they found the window washer in the courtyard. Uh, the victim, a 61-year-old man, was transported to UC San Diego, where he later succumbed to his injuries. Now, uh, since that incident happened this morning, San Diego PD and Cal OSHA had been here for several hours inspecting the scene and picking up evidence. They say this is still a developing investigation. We have some conflicting reports. Either he was on the fifth floor or he might have been as high as the eighth floor when he fell. Uh, he was here washing windows with a partner. We've interviewed the partner and some of the residents uh, to get statements. The partner obviously is distraught. Again, police have not identified the name of that 61 year old window washer. I spoke to another one off camera who has worked on this building before, and he tells me the section the washer was working on doesn't have a crane hookup, but rather the cables are manually 
put through a series of hooks on the top section of the wall. Now, if you look back at the courtyard now, it is still closed off and hazmat crews are cleaning up uh, what is left of the scene here. They're expected to be here for quite some time. Live in downtown, Travis Rice, 10 News. No, you're on it, Travis. We appreciate it. Always so heartbreaking. And in this case, we're told that that man, in fact, was uh, alert, at least uh, eyes were open on his way to the hospital, but later died so tragically. The driver accused of attacking a jogger near the Otay Ranch Mall over the weekend is now sitting in jail this afternoon. Police arrested Saul Serrano last night. Serrano admitted to cutting off the jogger, Scott Witcher, and then getting out of his SUV and punching Witcher in the face. Serrano says that he thought the Witcher threw something at his car and then flipped him off. Serrano took off after the attack. Police were able to find him because the jogger remembered his license plate number. A history is made. The summit's over and now the big question is, will North Korea actually come through with its commitment to denuke? Well, now it's Corey Rangel breaking down the agreement between President Trump and Kim Jong-un and what happens next. A moment in history. After much fanfare, President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un met for the first time. After hours of talks, the two sat side by side and signed a joint statement. North Korea agreed to work toward completely getting rid of its nuclear weapons. But the agreement does not mention a verification process and gave no timetable. It does take a long time to, you know, pull off complete denuclearization. It takes a long time. Scientifically, uh, you have to wait certain periods of time and a lot of things happen. But despite that, once you start the process, it means it's pretty much over. The U.S. promised to provide security guarantees to North Korea, but also gave no specifics. President Trump also revealed the U.S. would suspend military drills in the area, something North Korea considers a security threat. We will be stopping the war games which will save us a tremendous amount of money unless and until we see that the future negotiation is not going along like it should. But we'll be saving a tremendous amount of money. Plus, I think it's very provocative. Kim Jong-un also agreed to recover the remains of U.S. military personnel missing in action and presumed dead from the Korean War. Democrats and Republicans are both expressing hope after the meeting, but remain cautious. The next steps in negotiation will test whether we can get to a verifiable deal. I'm a trust but verify guy. We want to see these efforts succeed and ensure that what has just transpired was not purely a reality show summit. Others question whether President Trump got too little and gave away too much. Honestly, I think he's going to do these things. I may be wrong. I mean, I may stand before you in six months and say, hey, I was wrong. I don't know that I'll ever admit that, but I'll find, a, I'll find some kind of an excuse. Even before the summit, some suggested that North Korea cannot be trusted because of its track record with previous agreements with the U.S. Our partners at PolitiFact looked into it and found there's some truth to that. Finding North Korea has taken advantage of prior deals, but in other cases, North Korea gave up more than it received. Now the U.S. will wait to see what happens this time. For the now, I'm Corey Rangel. Corey, thank you. Let's get to the Now News feed. And speaking of that summit with North Korea, President Trump crediting Otto Warmian for making it happen. Warmian, the college student who died after he was detained in North Korea. President Trump called him a special person in his life and said his parents are good friends of his. Well, an advisor to President Trump saying sorry. Peter Navarro now apologizing for saying there was a, quote, special place in hell for Canada's prime minister. He was speaking about Canada's new measures following President Trump's tariffs. Well, 600 migrants on their way to Spain after they were turned down by Italy. This is video that we have in by Doctors Without Borders. Italy turning down the ship saying it is now taking a hard line on illegal immigration. 